The video today is the first lesson for my cello method and explains volume 1, number 0 and 1, plus posture and bow hold. In the text below the video you can see the times of the content and when number 1 and the accompaniment start, so you can always find that easily. I first introduce music writing and important signs, then posture and bow hold, and then play number one and the accompaniment. I recommend to play with a video using an earphone but leave one ear free so one ear can hear the recording and the other ear your own play. It might be good to see this video more than once because this first lesson includes so much basic and important information, too much to get it all at once. First, to music writing. In our language we talk about high notes and low notes. When we write the notes, the high notes are written high up in the system and the low notes low. The notes on the cello are easy to learn. When I hold the cello like that, the strings look a bit, little bit like the lines when I write music. And on the top line is the A, it's a top string now, then in the middle is the D, the bottom line is the G, and underneath is the C. I try that in music writing, and you can see how that makes sense. Here, so I fear the four strings, the A, D, G and C. Well, the music lines go like this, but then there are notes in between when we use the fingers. And the C is so low, it's underneath. So, these are the open strings. And that's how we write the music. I fear another sheet of music where I wrote the notes down from the bottom line to the top line. The bottom line was the G, in the middle was the D, and top is the A. And the notes in between, they're just based on the alphabet, so it's very simple. So we have the G, then it starts with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it starts again from A. And it could go up again, and here it goes lower, and underneath would be the C. At the beginning of each line is a clef written. For cello the clef is called the bass clef. It looks a bit like a back to front C. Now we come to the lower part of the page with the two bow directions. The bow has two ends. This end is called the nut or the frog. And this end is called the tip. When we start from the nut we call it down bow. And it comes from the violin where you play down. The other direction is called an up bow, it comes from the violin because it goes up. Well, there are two signs for it. If you hold the bow, like um, if you look at the nut here, it has a bit of a square. And this square is a sign for down bow when you start from here. And the tip has, of course, a tip. And the sign, if you hold the bow, bow the other way around, then it looks like a V. And this V sign is a sign for up bow. So if you start from here, it's a V. And if you start from here, the down bow has this square shape. Well, how do we sit when we play? Very simple, straight and upright. I sit always at the front of the chair, just here at the front and don't lean back. When you lean back, it can happen that the back of the cello touches the chair, like um, down here. And that not only rattles, but the rattle can cause damage. And the varnish of the cello can be scratched, so you best watch that. Well, because we need to sit straight, the cello can't be straight. 
stretch shadow would look like this. And then we would need to move away to that the cello can remain straight. Many cello cellists have the cello actually too straight and they play always slanting. It's not good for our body. The cello is a tool and we make music with it, but we have to sit straight, we have to be comfortable. Then we adjust the spike, we have here the spike, that about the lowest peg is where our ear is. That's a general sort of <coughs> rule. Once you have found your spot on the spike, I get, I myself and my students, let to measure it with my hand span, how much more or less it is. And then, if you sit on a different chair, it might be slightly different. The cello neck should be about a hand's width away from our neck and from our shoulder. That's the most healthy and comfortable posture. If you would need, would try to hold your left hand and push something straight at your neck, you have to lift it up high and you don't have power. If you have here hand width space, it's the most healthy, comfortable and effective position. I tell the cello then inwards, slightly inwards, so when I hold the bow, I can comfortably play the top string at the tip. If you have very long arms, you don't need to tilt the cello that much. When we play the lower string, C, we have to be careful not to touch our leg. We need to be able to C string without needing to move the cello. So the guide should be that when we stretch the bow out on the top uh, for the A string and on the C string don't touch the leg and we should not need to move our leg to move the cello. We have to reach everything. How steep we hold the cello and how much we tilt it depends on the length of our legs, the upper legs and the lower legs. I've told students hold the cello much higher and they would otherwise touch their legs when they play the C string. And now, how do we hold our bow? Let's take the bow in the wrong hand, about in the middle, but just on the wood. It's not good to touch the hair with our fingers. Now we stretch both arms and turn the right arm slightly inwards. Then we lower the hand until the middle finger touches the bow on the silver ring. And now we put the bow on, let's say, the D string. We hook the index finger a bit, like it is not straight and it's not pointed, it's slightly hooked. And the ring finger and pinky just lean on the bow, but not with the tip on top of it. Where do we put the thumb? The most important thing is we don't push it hard. The bow should just rest on the string the pointer finger leans a bit on the stick. We don't need really to hold the bow much. The string holds the bow. I put the thumb comfortably without pushing next to the little opening. Here's this little opening. I put it next to it, just on the top of it. It should just be held as it naturally would hang. So you don't push the thumb like this. You don't push it through like that. How your thumb hangs, that's fine. Then we move the arm from the elbow. By resting on the string a bit, the sound will just appear. And just let it happen. And it's nice, it comes off the cello just by itself. Because we don't need our left hand for the first two pieces, we just put the hand on the cello. And now finally we start playing number one. At the beginning of the line, there is a C rhythm. The C means common beat, which is four beat in one bar, or measure. And every beat in a piece has the same length. When the notes are not filled and have a stem, they are one beat long. After the four plus one notes in the next bar or measure, comes a squiggle, which is a sign for a one beat rest, followed by a sickish bar sitting on the line.
and this is a sign for a true beat rest. I position now the bow on the string in the middle between the end of the fingerboard and the bridge. So just here in the middle. And uh, I look that the bow is straight and slightly tilted inwards. I will play and count loud and I whisper during the rest during the rest. I count four beats in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, seen when I play the four plus one notes I don't lift the bow off the string just go right left not in the bow my bum get out of control it just rests and the weight that we have from our arm is enough you don't need to do anything except from the elbow moving right and left only during the rest we go back to a down bow to where we started and like if you stayed, start here, keep that in mind and go to the same spot, the string lower. I do it one time more. One, two, three, four. count again four beats in and play the accompaniment. When you want to play together with me, count with me really regularly and continue even if it doesn't work perfectly. When playing together, a stable speed is more important than anything. Now count with me and it should sound really nice together. One, two, three, four. Unless you want to watch this video again, see you again for next lesson. Goodbye for now.